Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome back to the 10th National Organic Agriculture Congress. For our first speaker this afternoon, we are very fortunate to have with us a distinguished expert in his own field to deliver the National Organic Agriculture Program Accomplishment Report for 2011 to 2013 allow us to introduce the officer in charge of the Department of Agriculture, BAFPS, Executive Director, Leo P. Cañeda. Hello. Okay, good afternoon. Let's get off to a good start for our afternoon session. I know that some of our colleagues are still at the exhibit area, but I know that you'll be joining us uh, in a short while. Okay, so far so good. We had a very festive opening ceremony. And what an opening ceremony. We had the opportunity to uh, uh, take a look at our winners. Uh, for today's, uh, for this year's uh, search for outstanding practitioners in organic agriculture, we also had a chance to uh, take a peep at the different exhibits in our uh, exhibit area. So for this afternoon, I'll be presenting to you uh, exactly this is an answer to a question, what has happened since then? We know very well that uh, the organic program was launched three years ago, and so much has happened since then. Ever since the creation of the board, the uh, determination of the operating framework within which the different guidelines were secured and formulated to guide us in the implementation of the program. And ever since also, the, uh, some funding support was allocated to the program. So let's take a look at what happened uh, over the years. So this is as an overview actually uh, comprising of no more than uh, 17 slides. So this is your National Organic Agriculture Program Review of Accomplishments from 2010 to uh, 2013. Okay, we all know that the program is a creation of Republic Act 10,068. And uh, per structure, we have uh, a National Organic Agriculture Board which is the highest uh, policy-making body of uh, the program, comprising of uh, 14 member agencies, chaired by our uh, Secretary of Agriculture, with the Secretary of the ILG as uh, the Vice uh, Chair, with uh, six members from the uh, private sector, uh, with three of them uh, coming from the small farming community, with each, uh, with each of the three, with each of Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao represented, and the three others uh, representing the NGO sector, the academe, and uh, of course the agribusiness uh, and the private sector. The rest uh, are composed of our colleagues from uh, six others, six other government agencies. So we have there, we have uh, in our slide, the composition of our board. Okay, then maybe we can uh, show a slide of uh, the members of, uh, yeah, from the private sector. So they were introduced earlier. For Luzon, we have Mr. Miller Bicaldo who is the general manager of uh, Picuaria Development Cooperative. For the Visayas, we have Mr. Ray Pedroso. And uh, from Mindanao, we have Ms. Emmeline Ligat. Then representing the NGO sector, we have uh, Mr. Charito Medina. Uh, representing the academe, Dr. Ben uh, Ladilad. And from the, for the agribusiness uh, sector, 
we have Mr. Edwin Martin Lopez. So basically, this is uh, how we have been structured by virtue of Republic Act 2068. And uh, I failed to mention we have the BAPS, among others, as the National and Technical, the National Technical and Administrative Secretariat of the BAPS. Then we have uh, around 10 other implementing units cooperating with the different regional field units in implementation of the program at the field level. And uh, all these agencies and regional field units are coordinating very closely with the different local technical committees in the identification of projects as well as their implementation through the years. Of course, we shouldn't forget uh, what the program is all about. Per uh, program design, the overall goal, of course, as with any program, is to be able to impact on the quality of life and the income of farmers. Second, increase the market presence of uh, organic products in the local and international markets. And thirdly, and we are hoping that with organic agriculture, we can make some contribution to overall agriculture output. Now to achieve these uh, three main goals, and as designed, number one, we need to convert at least 5% of our total agricultural area to organic farming. Actually, if you ask me, and as I go around the country, this is one uh, objective which is very clear to all our stakeholders yung uh, pag-convert ng at least 10% of our total agricultural area to organic farming. Then number two, increase the production of uh, organic products. Then expand uh, the market niche for agri-products, a third objective. Then number four, increase the number of certified organic farms or establishments. And uh, fifthly, increase the number of organic practitioners or farmer adapters. So when uh, we take a look at the program design document, basically these are the objectives that are very well explained in the document. Again, to repeat, uh, uh, all these five, the attainment of these five objectives should lead us to uh, improve the quality of life and income of our farmers, Increase the uh, market presence of organic products in uh, the local and international markets. And increase contribution of organic farming to total agricultural output. To be able to accomplish this, we had to contend with five interlocking components, which probably some of you have memorized already. These include it is institutional development and strengthening, research and development, extension, advocacy, promotion, and education, and communication, market development, uh, monitoring, and evaluation. And uh, lastly, the one that is very close to uh, all our implementing agencies, including the regional field units, productions, and technology support. So what, has, what have been or what has been our major accomplishment through the years? If there is one indicator against which the program should be vetted or has been vetted all this time very clearly, it's with regard to the area objective. Because we've been saying all along that under the organic program, we should be able to convert at least 5% of our total agricultural area to organic farming. Now, we did some sleuthing in the Department of Agriculture. That's exactly uh, what is meant by the 5%. Accordingly, at any given time, based on time series information, uh, we, we have to contend with about uh, 9.5 million, million hectares in our country. So 5% of that, per estimate from BAS, would correspond to about 450,000 hectares. 
So that is the figure we're looking at and which we hope to accomplish by 2016. We're now in 2013, midway into the six-year implementation of the program. And goodness, we ask ourselves, where have we been all this time? How much of that has been accomplished already? So these are the milestones, so to speak, over the past three years. Number one, vis-a-vis -vis our target of 450,000 hectares, based on reports coming from the different regional field units and implementing agencies, a total of uh, 30,000 200 hectares has been accomplished already. So that's only a little about, that's only about 6%. So we still have a long way to go, admittedly, with regard to accomplishing our area target under the program. My goodness, 6% or 7%, it's now 2013, meaning we need to work harder to accomplish the 93% in the next three years. That's an average of uh, what? Almost 20, no. 30% uh, yearly starting 2014 until 2016. With regard to the number of farmer beneficiaries or adopters, again, based on information coming from the different regional offices and implementing units, a total of 76,500 has been documented already. So if you ask our RFUs and implementing units, Ito yung mga farmer beneficiaries which accord who accordingly have availed of any of our assistance, different interventions under the organic program. But let me also share with you the results of a recent uh, survey of the Bureau of, of Agriculture uh, Statistics. Sinasabi nila, uh, now, as, as we speak now, we have a total of about 13,000 230 organic producers in the country. Out of these, about 8,900 have already been certified. Then uh, about 97 of these are, uh, are, are certified as first party and second party. Only about 127 ang nakapasa sa third party certification. Although based on the records of BAPS, out of the 127, only about 50 has been certified by either the OCCP and NICERT. So the question is, saan nagaling yung 77? Kung uh, 50 lang yung, uh, yung reported uh, certified uh, organic farms slash establishments by either OCCP and NICERT. Uh, according to uh, BAS, these are establishments claimed to have been certified by other international certifying bodies. And how I wish we can uh, show the uh, breakdown later. By commodity, majority of our certified organic farms are into production of uh, fresh agricultural produce. About 94% of them and the rest uh, are into organic input production. Now let me uh, walk you through the accomplishments of the program by component. Uh, we were saying earlier that uh, seven components, uh, I mean the program has seven components. Now with regard to the component on uh, institutional development and strengthening, these are the major accomplishments. Uh, a total of 14, Administrative orders have been approved already since 2010. The seven of these are, are contained in our compilation dated uh, May 12. Some of you who are familiar with the compilation uh, could uh, probably remember kung ano yung mga administrative orders na yon. The seven uh, practically refer to the different uh, guidelines, say, on the accreditation of certifying bodies, on the registration of organic uh, food and input producers, guidelines on the approval and evaluation, uh, evaluation and approval of projects, guidelines on the accreditation of organic uh, extension service providers uh, down the line. Interestingly, also uh, in connection with institutional development and strengthening, 
a total of 786 local technical committees have been formed have already been formed and 58 of these are at the provincial level then uh, about 90% at the municipal level level and 69 at the city level at least it's good to know that uh, as demonstration of their support to the program some local government units have gone as far as actually coming up with the respective local ordinances on organic agriculture promotion and coinciding with that the creation of the respective local technical committees. But vis-a-vis uh, -vis the total number of local government units in the country, this is only about a third, I guess. So we still have uh, to work on the remaining two-thirds, the balance of two-thirds of our local government units, which in our reckoning have to be co-opted into the program by way of passing the respective local ordinances on organic agriculture promotion and the creation of the respective local technical committees. At least we're happy one third of them have been responding. Now in terms of the total number of organized slash assisted organic farmer associations and uh, institutions, based on reports coming from the field, a total of 260 of them uh, are already in that category. Then of course we have accredited already so far, two uh, certifying bodies, the OCCP and NYSERC. We're pleased to announce that in the case of NYSERC, they now have a nationwide geographic coverage. It used to be that NYSERC's uh, you know, certification activities were confined uh, to certain parts of the country. Then this one, number of registered organic input manufacturers, producers, and retailers. This one is registration through box. A total of 20 have already made the mark. Then I was, uh, okay. In terms of production support, a total of 327 demo farms have been established already. Then this one, uh, based on a report coming from the Bureau of uh, Soil and Water Management, accordingly, uh, their interventions have already covered uh, at least uh, 30,000 hectares already. Uh, Altogether, benefiting from a total of 52 units of uh, farm equipment distributed. Then uh, in line with the recent budgeting process of online departments, we have identified, or we have actually funded already 61 BUB projects and other projects uh, which uh, are not elsewhere classified, 501. Uh, with regard to marketing support, a total of 52 trading posts have been established already. Uh, this one uh, is a report uh, from uh, AMAD, Agriculture uh, Marketing Assistance Division. Then under, uh, in support of the organic program, a total of 16 trade fairs and exhibits have already been conducted, most of which uh, are in the nature of international exhibits. Then with regard to research and development, 160 research uh, projects have been funded already over the past three years. With regard to extension, a total of 898 training activities have been conducted already. Uh, covering a total of about 38,000 participants. Then corollarily, a total of 60, no, learning sites have been established, covering a total of 69 hectares. This one, I just, I'm not so sure if we all can relate to this. With regard to promotion and advocacy, a total of 822 public consultations had already been conducted. Then, uh, Specifically under the National Organic Agriculture Program, since its formal launching three years ago, a total of three NOAC had already been uh, conducted, with uh, the 10th National Organic Agriculture Congress being the fourth. So we're getting there. So see you in uh, the next, how many more of uh, Congresses? How many more Congresses? Well, this one, we always uh, mention this, total number of IEC materials distributed. 
quite a figure. Then maybe uh, you'll be interested to know how many uh, project proposals have been approved already under the program. Uh, based on reports, again, coming from the different RFUs and implementing agencies, a total of 864 proposals had already been funded under the program, with the majority of these benefiting local government units and uh, our partners in the private sector. With the, uh, our, our colleagues from the academe accounting for only about uh, less than 20% of the total number of uh, approved and funded uh, organic proposals. In terms of actual funding assistance that had already been mobilized and actually extended to the, dif to the different recipients under the program, a total of 1.1 billion had been funneled already in support of various programs, projects under the program. So again, uh, no, but in terms of uh, the breakdown of this funding assistance, local government units and uh, SOOCs and the academe cornered uh, the bulk of uh, the pie. Then, uh, then by purpose, majority of this went to uh, production and technology support, about uh, a third of this. No, research and development, I mean, about uh, a third of this, recently followed by the allocation for production and technology support. Then uh, demo farms would also, would, would seem to have cornered uh, quite a big slice as well of the total funds uh, extended in support of various uh, projects under the National Organic Agriculture Program. So through the years, that's how uh, we have performed relative to uh, funding allocation to different uh, components under the organic program. Now we have uh, had ever since a very prolific board supporting the program. And uh, just considering uh, the resolutions or the key policy directives coming from the board over the past year, these are the major uh, resolutions or policy directives that they have come up with. Number one is with regard to the resolution extending the period of uh, voluntary compliance to third party certification until April 2016. It used to be that the timeline was end of 2012. But the board uh, noti noted that uh, it was taking a while for our many partners in the industry to actually avail of the certification subsidy because of certain requirements or some other uh, you know, uh, concerns that we have to deal with. So uh, the board decided uh, that uh, perhaps it would be advisable to extend the period of compliance until April 2016. Another resolution uh, issued this year is with regard to uh, how much of the total uh, fund allocation to the different uh, RFUs and, and implementing agencies should be earmarked for production and technology support. It used to be only half of that, but now it's 40% of the total budget allocation to any region or any of the 10 implementing agencies should, that should uh, go into uh, funding, production, and technology support. Well, this one is uh, a, a result of a series of representations which uh, the board made with the local government of Batanes. The board was uh, a little ambitious, so they said that uh, at least uh, I'll some islands or groups of islands uh, should be declared as uh, organic zones. And the first in the list uh, to respond to the call is the island 
for the province of Batanes. So there is such a declaration and uh, more to come, hopefully. So Batanes, one, and counting. And why not? I mean, everybody knows where Batanes is and uh, uh, what kind of uh, participation or contribution it can make towards the uh, further promotion of organic agriculture in the country. Oh, this one. Uh, it used to be that uh, our fund utilization was being hampered by the fact that only uh, that the different regions and implementing agencies were only given so much of approving authority. Again, the board uh, took note of the situation and decided that uh, the amount of approval or the approval or the approving limit of the different RFUs. Uh, and implementing agencies can actually be increased from 5 million to 10 million. So if we have any projects in the field, for as long as uh, this doesn't exceed 10 million pesos per project, per proposal, uh, this can be uh, directly submitted to the different RFUs and, impl and implementing agencies for the necessary uh, evaluation, approval, and endorsement. Especially because the understanding is the funds are going to be downloaded already to the different RFUs and IAs, and we are giving them the discretion and the full authority to, uh, to grant this much of assistance under the program for as long as the amount uh, doesn't exceed uh, 10 million pesos per project. And we hope that uh, with this development, we can... Uh, significantly increase our fund utilization ratio, which has been, uh, you know, uh, in, in, the, in the vicinity of only 53% even as of August of this year. Although th the instruction the, from the Secretary's office is for us to be able to use up the entire amount by end of the year. We have requested the different RFUs and implementing agencies to submit the respective cash-up plans and based on the plans that they have submitted, it's like we're looking at a 94% fund utilization rate by end of the year. Of course, uh, we won't complain if the figure can be further increased to 100% by then. Yeah, just for the information of everybody, if you want to know more about uh, what I had just presented, you can take a look at this by clicking to our... Uh, website. It's all available there. Yeah, I said we have uh, 10 implementing agencies uh, supporting the program. The latest additions were Filmec, uh, BAI, and uh, the Bureau of Planning Industry. So that makes uh, 10 all in all. 10 uh, implementing agencies under the Department of Agriculture supporting the organic agriculture program. Yeah, among others, uh, this is an update on the BAFs. BAFs now sees...